ESPN welcomes you to the following presentation of the National Football League. Typical huge throng, nearly 90,000 expected to be here in Arlington. Story in the NFC East. Eagles lose yesterday in Arizona. So Dallas a full game up as it is. Can extend it another half length here tonight. Washington trying to win back-to-back -back games for the first time since the end of the 2012 season. Road team won the toss. Preferred the option for the second half. So the home team, Dallas, will get it first. Be real surprised if Kai Forbath gives Dwayne Harris a good look at a return. Harris has really hurt the Redskins in this rivalry as a return specialist, and Forbath struggles to kick off. It's not just a ball game, people come to party in his house. Off we go from Jerry World. And Harris will let it go. No return on the kick. A good one for Forbath. Haven't seen as many of those thus far this year. That'll bring out Tony Romo and this Dallas offense. Tony Romo leads the league coming into the week. And with Drew Brees' good performance he, last night, he drops to second in completion percentage. But the numbers have been otherwise outstanding. It's not as though Johnny's carrying the entire franchise on his back with every snap. There's more help around him this year. But he's still capable of making great plays, scrambling. And they're very good on third down. Number one third down outfit in pro football. Nobody drives, starts from the 20, and here is the workhorse, the leading rusher in the league. One yard for DeMarco Murray. Jarvis Jenkins with the tackle, you probably know. Seven games, seven 100-yard or more performances in each, breaking Jim Brown's NFL record to start the season. Yeah, he's not just a great runner. He's an outstanding receiver. He has 22 catches. Watch him finish runs. He makes a lot of yardage after contact. He can wear defenses out. Officially given two. It's Romo out of the pocket. Throwing back to the middle to Witten, complete for the first down at the 36-yard line. So he had to go to reach two and three until he found the future Hall of Famer. Jason Witten, Tony Romo, that's the 600th completion between the two of these great Cowboys. Watch Witten sit down between zone defenders and uncover. Hard to coach those instincts. Romo and Witten, first quarterback and tight end duo, 600 completions. So let's talk about Rivers and Gates, but in fact, those guys get to 600 first, and Murray takes the first down to run to the 41-yard line. Let's check that Dallas offense leading the way for all this success to Marco Murray. Three first-round picks, Smith, Frederick, and the rookie, Zach Martin out of Notre Dame, along with Leary and Parnell, who's in for the injured Doug Free. Already heard from Witten. Escobar has been on a hot streak with a few touchdowns in the last couple of games. Three receivers very often, Bryant, Terrence Williams, Beasley, the slot man. Scott Linehan came from Detroit. Pass game coordinator. He and Bill Callahan collaborate on the offense. Romo with time. Firing incomplete. Looking for the rookie out of Pitt, Devin Street. As they work the rest of the defense in. So it's a third down chance for this Washington defense. Jason Hatcher had 11 sacks for the Cowboys last year. He's now on the other side of this rivalry. Brian Arakpo out for the year with a torn pectoral muscle. Trent Murphy gets his first NFL start. The rookie out of Stanford. A couple of 22-year-olds on the corner. Rashad Breeland, the rookie out of Clemson. And David Amerson, the second-year man out of NC State with veterans in the secondary. Pressure on, Romo trying to spin, but couldn't get away from Merriweather. And Brandon Merriweather gets his second sack of the year. After one first down, the Cowboys will kick it away. I like what Merriweather did. Romo audibles, and you're going to see Merriweather come off the left side, and he keeps Romo in the pocket. And that's something the Redskins talked about having the necessity to do. Well done by Merriweather getting there on the blitz and containing Romo in the pocket. He didn't go for that left shoulder dip spin move, did no, he? No, he did not. He was waiting for it. A loss of 12 on the play. 
Chris Jones, a deep kick. And from the 15, it's Andre Roberts, who has room on the left side. Picked up a block, and Roberts accelerates. Brought down by the kicker across midfield, but into Cowboy territory. So an explosive start for Washington. The big return from Roberts is Washington and Colt McCoy the ball in Cowboy territory when we come back. From Arlington, the ESPN's Monday Night Football brought to you by GMC. Enter the Never Say Never sweepstakes for a chance to win a 2015 GMC vehicle at gmc.com slash NFL. ESPNFanshop.com powered by Dick Sporting Goods and Navy Federal serving the armed forces and their families. 78 degrees, beautiful evening outside, although the top is closed tonight. Our coverage from Spider Cam is brought to you by DirecTV. For the first time since December 8 of 2011, Colt McCoy, former Texas Longhorn, starts a game in the NFL. Alfred Morris runs left, and it's a gain of two yards for Alondo McLean in on the tackle. John, do you think we'll see a lot of Morris as part of the game plan here tonight? That's the goal of the Redskins. We must establish Alfred Morris quickly in this game. He's been awful quiet in recent weeks, and the best way to help an inexperienced quarterback in this system is hand the ball to number 46. The stemming, the moving the Cowboy defensive line does before second and seven. And the point throws complete. It's a good job to elude the tackle by Niles Paul, who comes down the sideline and gets to the 25-yard line. A gain of 20 and a first down for Washington. It's Niles Paul is becoming a very good tight end for the Redskins. That time, Alfred Morris, watch number 46, pick up this blitz. Nice pick up. There's a mistake up front, but we find Niles Paul in the flat. Barry Church misses a tackle. First down, Redskin. It's all set up by the 37-yard punt return by Andre Roberts. The 25, it's to the right, and hit for the loss of two by Justin Durant is the running back, Morris. Sixth-round pick who had so much success the first two years behind an offensive line that starred with Trent Williams on the left side. Tom Compton is in at right tackle. Replaces Tyler Columbus, who's inactive tonight. Jordan Reed has returned from his early season injury to join Paul Morris. Two receivers who make big plays. Garcon with those strong hands. And Sean Jackson who catches the big flies downfield. And Ann Roberts, whose work he saw in specialty. Roy Halou checks in on second and 11. There's a little read option with McCoy. There was nothing there. Dallas read it. So will we see more of this in the offense tonight? I think they'd like to use Colt McCoy's legs more, and the read option is part of it. But when you keep the ball as a quarterback, you rely on perimeter blocking. That time, Niles Paul missed miserably. Third down and long. Let's see if Dallas can mount a pass rush, Mike. Only seven sacks on the season. They would love to knock Washington out of field goal range. Five receivers in the pattern. McCoy is pressured. He does a Romo spin. Gets away. Keeps the play alive. Fires downfield. It's incomplete. Roberts trying to work the sideline. And McCoy couldn't keep his pass inbounds. A field goal attempt is coming for Washington. It's one thing that the Cowboys don't do is get to the quarterback often. But you see Roberts free himself late in the down. McCoy just missed him. Roberts on the ad lib did break free. It'll be a 44 yard field goal attempt for Kai Forbath. Kicked the game winner last week against Tennessee. Tress Way, the punter, is the holder. The operation is good, and so is the kick for the 12th time in 13 tries this year. The good punt return allows the Redskins to kick an opening drive field goal. In 105,000 for the opener of this stadium six years ago against the Giants. Sellout crowds are right around 90, 91,000. Lots of folks uh, buy $29 tickets 
and stand on those plazas almost like being at a sports bar you watch the game you go back outside there's a big screen it's a great experience in-house one touchback already for four bath nice this one will be returned from five deep it's Dwayne Harris up the middle bounces off a would-be tackle by Adam Hayward and is tracked down by EJ Biggers good coverage for Washington. John, the strengths of DeMarco Murray that have helped him get all these yards. Well, my dad was a running back coach, and he taught me about the P's. His kid has power. He can break tackles. He's got a great stiff arm. He's patient. He doesn't predetermine his cuts. He reads the blocks extremely well, and he's precise in the passing game. He knows what route to run, and this kid can pick up blitzes with the best of them. He's an all-around back with extreme production. How's that? Perfect. With a P. How's that? <laughs> <I like it. laughs> Pal. Partner. <laughs> From the 15. It's Murray right. to the right. Gaping hole. Brian Kerrigan able to pull him down after a gain of eight yards. Zone blocking plays are important, but it's the way they block the backside that sets up his cuts. And against this Redskin 3-4 defense, offensive co uh, line coach Bill Callahan has put in some runs that are diagrammed to beat that front. That was one of them. After the gain of eight, Lance Dunbar is checked in the game. He's in the slot. Romo looking, firing, and it's caught by Terrence Williams. He had the time to get it to Williams, just past the 35, gain of a dozen. First down, Dallas. Let me show you why you draft Zach Martin from Notre Dame in the first round. Number 70, right guard. Look at this pass set. I mean, that's one-on-one -on -one domination, and it allows Romo to step up in the pocket and find Williams on an outside breaking route. If you have Romo that kind of time, he'll shred you. From the 36. Again, it is Murray. It'll be just a couple of yards there. You talk about the rookie Zach Martin from Notre Dame. It's all part of the coaching of Bill Callahan, who was the head coach with the Raiders. He was on your staff. And then you went to Tampa. And then he went to Nebraska, the Jets. But Bill Callahan's been a tremendous offensive line coach. He was the coordinator here last year. He took over the play calling from Jason Garrett. Now Scott Linehan comes in. Joins Callahan and Garrett. You got a bunch of guys who call plays, but a lot of intelligence on the offensive meeting side. It shows in this performance. Look at that, another big hole. And Murray's near midfield. Gate of 11, first down, Dallas. Just all kind of blitzes that are going to come off the left side. Romo says, I'm not going to deal with that. I'll hand it to Murray. That's a gap blocking play. The double team on the right side, outstanding. Once again, their first round draft choice, Zach Martin, is getting it done. Good job. He was a left tackle at Notre Dame for 50 games. I was watching the pass block on that replay you showed. He looked like a left tackle, a tackle, an anchor in a pass set. Just shy of midfield, it sets up the play action game. Covered downfield. The flag is down as Romo out of the pocket takes off and gains a couple of yards into Washington territory. Flag thrown in the secondary. We'll hear from Tony Carrenti, our referee here tonight. Illegal contact, defense number 31. This five-yard penalty will be added. This five-yard penalty will be added to the end of the run. First down. Brandon Merriweather, this was as Romo was in the pocket. Well, it's a two-man route. You see Merriweather step up. I don't know, Mike. I... That, that is what they've told the officials to call. You put your hands on him, and you reroute him in any way. Once you're out of the five, it's going to be an automatic flag. Never used to be, but has been called that way this year. Murray with the carry. Less than two yards. You know, John lined up next to Zach Martin is 78. Jeremy Parnell, he's in for Doug Free, so they've had to go to a replacement because of the injury to Free. Parnell's thrown a couple of nice blocks in this opening quarter. No doubt. He's been around the league. He started with the Saints, a cup of coffee in Miami. He's continued to develop his trade, and he's taken advantage of the snaps, and they love to run their double-team schemes to the right side. But 
beside him and Martin. Rookie Devin Street, the fifth round pick out of pit, bottom of your screen. Second and eight. Romo, middle shot, Witten couldn't hang on. In a tough spot, Ryan Clark, the veteran, former Steeler, was the last man there to keep him away from the catch. That's a great play by Clark. They're going to try to get Witten down the seam and from the backside. Ryan Clark dislodges the ball from Witten. Legal. Outstanding play. He's done it a long time. Ryan Clark. Fine football player. Got an eighth year veteran in Merriweather, 13th year at Clark at the safeties, but the inexperience on the corners with Breland and Amerson. Play clock running down, third and eight. Off in time, it's a blitz. Romo able to get away in one, not the second. Finally brought down by Perry Riley Jr. after Clark initiated the pressure. That's a couple of third downs, John, where Jim Haslitz brought the heat and got to Romo. Well, it's an all-out blitz. Tony Romo's got to see there's no center fielder. He's got to change the protection or throw the ball on time somewhere. He's one short, and the Redskins have gotten after Romo twice with blitzes on third down. Jay Gruden likes the look of that. Romo and Linehan back to the drawing board as the punter Chris Jones will try to pin Washington inside the tent. Roberts runs over for the fair catch at the 13-yard line. 40-yard kick, all net. Twice, Tony Romo's spin didn't win. Sacked by the Redskins. Hard to believe, the 13th year of the NBA on ESPN tips off Wednesday night. D. Rose and the Bulls back. We'll see how Carmelo looks in the triangle with the Knicks. And my partner, Hubie Brown's waiting for me in Portland, Oklahoma City, and the Blazers as we get going with the NBA on ESPN. Of course, the Dallas Mavericks start the season tomorrow night against the Champs, San Antonio. Colt McCoy takes over from his own eight. First down, on the boot, with time, fires. It is behind the receiver. Jackson able to hang on to Deshaun at the 26-yard line, picks up a first down. Well, you need a better throw than that. Deshaun Jackson, who's outstanding after the catch, needs a ball he can run with. That time, McCoy fooled the Cowboys with the fake. And Jackson goes down and makes a great catch. Jackson's hands stay under the ball. As we watch, this will be a look that will give us some definition. It looked to be a clear catch. And will be the first down for Washington. Hey, bring it! Showing a lot of pressure looks to McCoy here early on. It's a run to the right for Morris with no gain. It's been a long time, almost three years since we said at the top. Colt McCoy had 21 starts in those first two years for Cleveland. On December 8th, a Thursday night game, James Harrison hit him hard. Remember, there was another injury on this play, and they said that the medical staff didn't realize that McCoy suffered a concussion. Later on, he said he didn't remember anything from the game. The last we saw him with the Browns, it changed the way the league addressed concussions, putting a monitor, an observer upstairs to call down to the sidelines and let them know. In any case, that was the end of the Browns run, essentially for Colt. They waited this long to get another opportunity to start in the NFL. Gets it out to Garcon. Look at the Cowboys pursue, and a half dozen Dallas players ready to bring him down. We'll credit Tyrone Crawford and Justin Durant for that stop. That's what do, they do a great job of. They get six, seven, eight different Cowboys to the ball. You're going to see Skandrick come off the right side on a blitz. McCoy gets rid of it to the hot receiver. There's four, five, six, seven Cowboys that show up. If you play against Dallas, you better protect the ball because they're coming after you. Need to get to the 36. Twisting four-man rush picked up. McCoy throws complete. Jordan Reed. And there comes the Cowboy convoy. Tyler Patman, the backup corner, joins Justin Durant. And after one first down, Washington will punt again. That's what defensive coordinator Rod Marinelli loves to do. Get you behind in the chains, third and long situations. That's when he plays that Tampa 2 coverage. Here's Harris, and he's dangerous. Rookie lefty punter, fresh away, gets it away. 
53 yards, and Harris is hit on the spot. The flag comes down the back end of it. Just signed off the practice squad today. Akeem Davis immediately draws the flag. I don't see anything wrong there. There should be no what's penalty. The, what's the helmet? Helmet to helmet contact? He leans with the helmet from that angle. You can see that. That might be the one place they were looking. But the timing, he caught the ball and was hit. But the helmet does bend forward. Tony Carrenti, the referee. We determined the, there is no foul in the play. It is a legal hit. First down for Dallas. For the Cowboys, we'll get it for the third time. When we come back is DeMarco Murray. Early on, six carries and 31 yards. To know each other at the end of Jason Garrett's career, he was in Tampa, and Jay was uh, helping you on your offensive staff. They go head to head. These guys are sharing the same shirt monogram, JG, as head coaches for the first time. Drive starts to the 19. The back is Joseph Randall, and Randall goes to the 23 yard line to pick up a four, and we have a flag throw. Holding. Offense number 72. 10 yard penalty, excuse me. The enforced half the distance to the goal. Repeat first down. Since the line scrimmage was inside the 20, John on the opposite side, Jim Hazlitt, who also familiar with Jason Garrett. Defensive coordinator has done a very nice job here the first couple of series, especially on those third downs. He's done a very good job considering all the key players he's missing. Brian Arakpo, their best pass rusher. D'Angelo Hall, their best corner. Amongst others, look for him to keep mixing it up to try to keep Romo off balance. Randall the back. It's first and 20. As Romo takes a deep shot for Terrence Williams. Williams incomplete. Challenged by the fourth-round pick out of Clemson, Bashad Breland is really emerging here, making his fifth consecutive start. Play action pass. They fool the underneath coverage, and they get the one-on-one -on -one deep to the post. And Breland, for a rookie, has stepped up and played well in the absence of D'Angelo Hall. And keep a close eye, Mike, on Terrence Williams. He's already got six touchdown receptions. Reminds me of Alvin Harper, a former Dallas great. Did so much deep work on the opposite side of Michael Irvin. Turn it and give it to Randall. Working left, got a great block, but lost the football. Free on the ground. Washington says they have it. Stripped by Brandon Merriweather. Belongs to Washington. Off the bottom of the pile, the rookie out of Stanford. Trent Murphy recovers the Merriweather strip. Murphy's a high effort player. Randall has the ball loosely away from his body. Veteran play by Merriweather on the strip. And good hustle to the football setting up the Redskins. Just outside the 20 yard line. Great start for the visiting Redskins with their third team quarterback. You need a couple breaks early. Get some momentum. And anything can happen in, in the NFL. Everyone talks about give Murray a little bit of a break. Take some carries yeah. away. Randall is maybe the player who is the one to step into that breach. He runs here late first quarter and turns it over and gives Washington golden field position at the 25. McCoy perhaps turning the wrong way. Loss of two yards. Tyrone Crawford with the tackle, a mistake somewhere, whether Halu or the quarterback, McCoy. Backup running backs and backup quarterbacks. There's an audible by McCoy. Halu's going to walk forward and ask his fullback, Darrell Young, what the play is. When you audible as a quarterback, you got to turn and make sure your backs get it or you're going to look bad. And that's what that play was. Bad execution. Second and 12, take to Jackson. McCoy looking towards the end zone, into coverage, and it's intercepted by J.J. Wilcox. Then the ball comes out. Ruled a catch and a touchback, and Dallas turns Washington over. And 
Watch, watch Wilcox as he went to get it, has it, goes to the ground. And hangs on there. He turns back around. They'll look at it since the turnover automatically. Seems to complete the process on the way to the ground. A big mistake and interception thrown by McCoy taking a shot down the field. Robert Griffin the third talking to him there. We'll talk about Griffin and his progress in a little bit. Want to go back to this play made by J.J. Wilcox. He's not touched by the intended receiver Roberts as he makes the pick. They are watching here for does he get complete control at a point? Did he go out of bounds with that foot if he got complete control? And then when he does get control and gets up and has not been touched, is he a runner at that point? And then is the ball dislodged as a fumble? And then it would be out of the back of the end zone and a touchback. So there's a myriad of rules that come into play here. Tony Correnti has taken the look under the hood. And here's the call. After review, the ruling on the field will stand as an interception. Dallas ball, first down after a touchback. Well, John, you go back to the headline of that, not the review and the yeah. control there. It's the play by McCoy in the red zone. Well, started on first down. They miss a handoff, and that's just a terrible decision. And the only reason he's playing is because Cousins turned it over. Not good by Colt McCoy. Dallas fumbles. Two snaps later. Washington is intercepted. DeMarco Murray's back from the 20. And Murray gets a big hole up the middle. Spins and turns. A 10-yard first down gain tackled by Ryan Clark. His patience. Press it, set up your blocks, and then cut it back at the last second at full speed. Break off that right foot. That's impressive. And you see the finish. There's two yards after contact. That time he runs over Ryan Clark. Impressive back. He's going to be a rich man next year, Mike. Someone, hopefully Dallas, gets him signed long-term. Final year of his contract. Cap number right around a million and a half. That will change. Romo, all the time. Crossing off the hands of Witten. Those two have hooked up 600 times. Had one of their easier pitching catches there and did not convert. Risk is just do not have a pass rush. That time Romo had five seconds to find an open receiver. And without the blitz, the Redskins can't get there. So expect to see a lot of pressure in long yardage situations from this Redskin defense. They just can't get there with a straight rush. This is third and one, so the top line applies. Third and three or less. They're almost four out of every five. 20% better than the NFL average. They're 20% better on third and ten or more. They're the top team in the league converting third downs. And he'll pitch it to Dunbar. Got it outside, man. A nice cut back inside to get six yards and get the first down. Tough play to stop in short yardage. Romo reverses to his right, and they flip it back to the left. And they're trying to fool the backside defensive end with this reverse action. They got a one-on-one -on -one for Perry Riley, but he's no match. For Lance Dunbar, expect to see a little more of Dunbar after that early fumble by Joseph Ram Randall, Mike. 16th rush by Dunbar. After one in Texas, Washington leads 3-0 on Monday Night Football. ESPN, celebrating 45 years of Monday Night Football. A lot of talk about making football a better, safer game. ESPN with a presentation of $175,000 check. USA Football. Ed Durso, our executive vice president. Angela Woods, director of corporate outreach. Scott Hallenbach of USA Football. All there on hand for that ceremony before the game. Over the weekend, a variety of activities and events in the Dallas area supporting youth football and its safe growth. And our congratulations to all involved there. DeMarco Murray with a carry. For a gain of three, we know how big high school football and the sport is in the state of Texas. John, I read a story in the paper a couple of days ago here. There's one town, because their team's in the playoffs, it's a small town. They've canceled Halloween. Actually, they postponed Halloween. They moved to Friday Halloween because their local team is in the playoffs. That's the passion of the sport in these parts. I'd like to live in that town. <laughs> Second and six. It is right back to Murray seeking space. It's a tackle made by Ryan Kerrigan. 
And Keenan Robinson. So Kerrigan becomes really the guy who has to carry this linebacking core on the outside with Brian Arakpo now done for the season with the pec injury. Yes, indeed. And again, keep an eye on this Redskin defense. Jim Hazlitt has bombed the Cowboys with blitzes on the last two third and mediums. Let's see what he has in store here. Romo's missed his last three passes. Three in a row missed. That's a season high for Tony Romo. That's how good his season has been. Back to pass, no flag thrown, and Witten's got it. For the first down, he's pushed out of bounds at the 44-yard line. He will not set a season best for consecutive incompletions. Well, it all starts with pass protection, and this third down offense of the Cowboys has a very tight pass protection plan. They use all five eligibles, but here's the blitz shown by the Redskins. You see a couple of them bail, one of them comes, and there's Jason Witten, a reliable third down target for a long time. The 44 play action. And he'll swing it out to Murray, as John told you. Terrific in this roll. Murray inside the 15. At the 10. Still on his feet, DeMarco Murray lost the football. Merriweather recovers. Back-to-back -back possessions with turnovers for Dallas. This time, Murray fighting for the extra yard. That's his fifth fumble. The only negative of DeMarco Murray is ball security. He should give up on this play late in the down. Two, three, four Washington Redskins converging on them, and they strip the ball. Can't see when it squirts out from that angle. Look from this side here, and it's out before any body part is down. All five times he's lost it, the opponents have recovered. They haven't been able to get back on a Murray fumble yet this year, assuming this one stands in the review process. That's one thing everybody does here. <laughs> There's no questioning with that massive, nearly 60-yard wide video screen. Everybody's looking up to see. And what they're going to see is a Dallas fumble and Washington ball. That turnover confirmed. It was recovered by Merriweather, but Bashad Breeland, the rookie I mentioned earlier, John, was the one who caused the fumble. They're getting a lot of mileage out of this fourth round pick from Clemson. Watch him on the right side of your screen, number 26. Rake that ball out with his right arm before Murray goes down. Clear fumble, clear recovery. First down, Washington. Three turnovers in the last 10 snaps. Two by Dallas, one by McCoy on his last play. They run Morris to the right. Alfred Morris, second effort, games three. Justin Durant, the captain of this Dallas defense, in on the tackle. Justin Durant deserves more credit than he gets. Not only does he lead the Cowboys in tackles, he leads the Cowboys in effort. Sideline to sideline, every down linebacker. He played very well for the Jaguars, the Lions, and he's played all three linebacker spots for the Cowboys. Man, is he valuable. Second and seven, play action. McCoy looks deep, takes a shot to Sean Jackson, breaking free, and caught it at the 40-yard line. Brought down by Sterling Moore, but a huge gain by Jackson. Great call backed up. Play action pass. Sterling Moore one-on-one -on -one with Deshaun Jackson. Forget about it. Nice double move back to the post. Ball slightly underthrown, or Deshaun scores. That's very good deep ball concentration. We've said it a lot about Jackson, Mike. The ex-baseball player who was drafted has outstanding tracking ability on the deep ball. That's Brad McCoy, Colts' dad. You've heard in the lead-up to the game, he was his high school quarter uh, coach, and his son was a great quarterback at a 2A school, Jim Ned High School in Tuscola, Texas. Another 40-plus yard gain for Deshaun Jackson. It was 49. And Alfred Morris backs that up with a good first down run. About a half dozen. 
Durant on the tackle. So well, think, that is the sixth, John, 40-plus yard catch for Jackson. Excuse me, Mike. I think he's the most feared deep ball receiver in the game today. He beat Philly for an 81-yard score earlier in the season, and then he beat the Seahawks on a go pattern down the sideline for 60. And after the catch, if you make a bad angle, he is gone. Electrifying football player and has been an excellent punt returner as well. I like him. Beat Richard Sherman and Patrick Peterson on those highlights. He's beaten the best, too. Flag is down as McCoy eludes the would-be sack, throws low, and Niles Paul couldn't hang on. Pass incomplete. We'll check the flag as we have some issues with Deshaun Jackson. As he gets into it with the Cowboys cornerback Brandon Carr and I'm not shocked every week this <laughs> shot Jackson's into it with somebody there's Henry Melton reminding Deshaun that he's only 178 pounds but let's see what the flag is long discussion here unsportsmanlike conduct Washington number 82 came in as a substitute came to the huddle, then removed himself from the huddle. That's a 15-yard penalty. Repeat, second down. That yeah, was on Logan Paulson. We see substitution infractions all the time. A play like that would be called because you don't want to necessarily go out there and trick the opponent, send a guy out who doesn't stay in the game, and the defense changes personnel. Quarterback has to take care of all the substitutions, Mike. He stands away from the huddle. He gets the signal from the sideline, and he echoes the personnel so people know who's coming and who's going. McCoy's got to take charge of the huddle. That time, he didn't do a very good job. John, let's talk about that specifically with McCoy for a minute. You're a third-string quarterback. You don't get many reps at all. So he moved up to backup, but then obviously you're going to get Kirk Cousins as many reps as possible. And I thought he put it perfectly last night when Cole told us this week was about getting to know you. He went to stretch next to the center, spent time with the receivers and throwing because he hadn't done those things. You don't do that as the number three working with the first-string offense. Now a question from the sideline by Jay Gruden, and the head linesman runs in to... The Speak concern with Tony was Carretti. over whether the down was correct to repeat the down. Yes, it is second down. And there's your answer. There is Robert Griffin III, the man who was getting so many of the snaps because he's learning a new offense, and then he dislocated his ankle. Sixth consecutive game he misses with that injury. On the road back, he may be ready next week, if not the game after that for Washington. The second and 20, and McCoy retreats and is able to complete it to Halu, who will work to the 41 yard line. It's a pickup of seven. Down there on the field, talked to Robert as he warmed up, practiced with the team earlier this week, came out, pushed it a little bit in the pregame workout. Told me that he feels that. In a few days, he'll have some of that explosiveness. There's been no recurring pain, just a light ankle brace that he has been wearing, and confident that whether it is next week against Minnesota or after the bye against Tampa Bay, he'll be ready to go. Redskins need some kind of positive game to set up for get four bat for a field goal. 41 here. Dallas shows pressure, backs out. They bring four. Henry Melton gets in and sacks his former Texas teammate. Remember, Melton used to be a running back in his college days. He was in Austin with McCoy. McCoy used to hand him the ball. That time, Melton took care of his old pal. Well, making a lot of mistakes in pass protection. You see Melton over Chester at right guard. Another line stunt. And Chester's no match for Melton in one-on-one -on -one pass protection. Great get-off by this Cowboy front four. Quick snap to get rid of these punts. Press away the kick. Got it down it inside the five and not even close. It's a 49 yard kick, but only 29 in net. One big shot to Jackson who got behind the secondary. Washington couldn't capitalize. They maintain a three point lead. Dallas was down 28 to three against San Francisco, halftime of week one. And you thought, man, this is going to be a season like Jerry Jones said, a young team that was on an uphill battle. But Tony Romo shook off the rustiness post-back surgery 
And the Cowboys have been on a great roll, winning six straight. That man's been on the roll, DeMarco Murray, who fumbled after the reception on the last play Dallas had, with a gain of about eight on first down. Yeah, go right back to him. He's had a great season. Fumble. He doesn't feel good about himself. Go right back to him. Run behind your Pro Bowl left tackle. And, man, is that left tackle impressive. One of the most physically imposing left tackles I've had the pleasure to meet. Tyron Smith. Ninth pick in the draft in 2011. That was his fourth year out of USC. Smith trying to open the... Cutback lane from Murray. Didn't get there, but he gets the first down at the 32-yard line. Well, Tyron Smith, not only is he a Pro Bowl selection, he's playing his 55th game tonight, and he's only 23 years old. I was talking to him at the facility the other day. Look at that reach. He could knock me out from Fort Worth, Mike. 37-inch arms. I think they're 39 now. And he uses his hands as weapons Outstanding football player. <laughs> From the 32-yard line, Rome over the middle. There's Bryant for the first time. Gain of 20 and a first down spilled by Ryan Clark. And Des Bryant brings up catch number 46 on the season. It's a matter of time before Des Bryant finds work in the middle of the Washington defense. Good pass protection. Romo has plenty of time in a clean lane to throw an accurate pass. To Des Bryant, who's very good after the catch. On his way to a third season with over 90 catches, over 1,200 yards, and that famous 88 in Dallas. Back to Murray inside the 45-yard line, and that's the beauty of what they have built here in Dallas. It's the offensive line to protect and run. It's Bryant. You still have Witten. You mentioned Terrence Williams developing as a deep threat. They can hurt you in so many ways, and that's why they're off to the 6-1 and one start. They use their personnel as, when, as well as any team in the league on offense. You see number 17 who's just checked into the game, Dwayne Harris. I call him a stunt man. Something is happening with Dwayne Harris. He'll be a lead blocker, a reverse. Something usually happens when he's in a game. Second and six to Harris. Didn't come down in bounds, incomplete. It's what you do. You find your roster that's available on game day and do what they do best. Let Harris block, return kicks, and run comebacks at full speed. Working against Breland in a one-on-one -on -one situation. Take a look yourself, Mike. One down, second one is very close there on the sideline. You get a great look at it on the big screen. Jason Garrett looking up. 56, 56, 56. No challenge flag thrown. Third and six. Witten's telling him to go quick. Coming back to help block the pressure. Washington brings five. Clark's a free rusher again, but he didn't get to him. And Murray's got a ton of room. DeMarco Murray to the 20-yard line. A gain at 25. Romo stepping up in the pocket made the difference. Tony Romo audible twice. And the blitz still got to Romo, but he's able to elude the rush. Watch the rush come off the left side. Tony sees it. He audibles. Brings Witten back into the protecting unit. They don't pick it up at all. Murray blew the pickup and is rewarded with a 25-yard gain. How about them Cowboys? Two catches for Murray, already 120 total yards on his 14 touches tonight. Drive started at their own 20, now at the Washington 20. Romo fires complete to Williams, to the six. Freeland the tackle. Tony Romo and his veteran savvy is a pleasure to watch. He turns his back to the Redskin defense and signals a slot combination to his wide receivers. He's going to turn his back to the Redskin defense. We missed it, but just a two-receiver slot combination and Terrence Williams wins. Officially a gain of 15. Inside of five minutes, it's first and goal. Quickly to Des Bryant. What a one-handed catch by Bryant. Using his strength, leaping to the end zone. Touchdown. What a 
Tough play by Bryant. That's why he wears number 88. Reminds me of Michael Irvin. Cowboys in their glory days would run the ball with Emmett Smith, get one-on-one -on -one coverage, and throw isolation routes to Irvin, and he'd kill you. How about the effort by Des Bryant? Runs right over two Washington Redskins. That's called smelling the goal line. What an effort by Des Bryant, another unrestricted free agent at the end of the season. Jerry Jones has some tough decisions, Mike. Well, he's become excellent, Des, at just this. As he makes that final stretch to the goal line, not letting that shin come down and being a full dive forward, just breaking the plane before the thigh or the hip come down. That replay of the touchdown is confirmed, and Dallas has taken the lead. Outstanding kicker Dan Bailey makes it 7-3. Eight plays and 80 yards. And the Cowboys with big plays, including the first long ball for Des Bryant and the first touchdown pass of the night for Robo. It's eight years ago this week, Drew Bledsoe was quarterbacking on a Monday night. We were at the old Texas Stadium in Irving. Bledsoe was struggling. Bill Parcells had thought about it and said, Time to make the move. Red Dog, time to make the switch. Tony Romo's coming in, although he had negative moments, three picks in that 36-22 loss. He saw, saw the signs of what Parcells had seen of a growing quarterback, an undrafted free agent. And Tony Romo's gone on to number two on the all-time Cowboy list of starts. Past Staubach, trailing Aikman, 36 straight games now with a touchdown pass. The guy he idolized, Brett Favre, meeting him on that list of consecutive games with TD tosses. Daly's kick tumbles down. It's good hang time, so no place to go. A touchback for Andre Roberts. So we go to the Cowboys facility Saturday, and we're talking to Tony Romo. I just felt like, John, he wasn't carrying the burden of, I have to be everything for this organization on every single play. Well, in the past, he's had to do a lot by himself. They haven't had a good defense. Mm -hmm. They haven't had a very good running game. They haven't had a very good offensive line. But you can see that the defense will get him the ball back. We do have a good running game. And when you watch this offensive line as this game unfolds, you can count on them to give you pass protection and close games out. He's still missing one day a week of practice because of the back surgery that he had in the offseason, the microdiscectomy that happened after... He had to leave that Washington game, the penultimate week of last year, in such pain. It's a pitch and a toss to Silas Red Jr. Gets a carry. Red, that might be a fumble. He was lying across Orlando McClain. They say down on the field. Nope. Tony Correnti says it's a turnover. And Dallas ball. Now, the headlinesman coming in from the side was pointing down to the ground. The runner was ruled down by contact second down his butt hits the ground there as he still has control pinned against the shoulder pad before he rolls over McLean right there that's gonna make him dead even though the ball moved he still has control of it he rolls over the linebackers body which would have otherwise been not considered down Garrett holding the challenge flag and will challenge This conversation came up a lot Thursday night. The ball moves, but do you still have control of it or not? Jason Garrett in conversation there with the field judge and the back judge about the call. He said the ball was moving first, so they want to challenge Dallas it. Take challenging a look. the ruling on the field that the runner was down by contact. It's interesting because the first defensive back in does move the ball, but it's repinned against the shoulder. Decision for Tony Carretti and New York. All new. Two words you hear a lot in this industry. Two words we seem to accept without actual proof. But in the case of Chrysler 200, new is actually happening. 
like getting better highway fuel economy than Camry and Fusion, and being the only car in its class to earn one of Ward's 10 best interiors. Come see for yourself before the deals are gone at the Chrysler Great American Drive event. Well-qualified lessees can lease the all-new 2015 Chrysler 200 Limited for $229 a month. After review, the ruling on the field will stand as down by contact. Dallas will be charged with their first timeout. Dallas cannot earn a third challenge in this game. Let's go back and look. And the combination of Tony Carrenti and uh, Dean Blandino, the vice president of officiating back in New York, my assumption would be, since it stands, is that they feel that Red repinned the ball on his shoulder pad when that butt cheek was down. Thus, no fumble. Tight call there. Second and five. Red gained five. McCoy is throwing. Complete to Andre Roberts for the first down. Pushed out of bounds by Sterling Moore at the 35. Back to the action here, Mike. That's a simple slot combination. McCoy, out of the pistol formation, can deliver the quick game extremely well, just like he did as a Texas Longhorn. Jay Gruden looking to get Colt McCoy a couple completions to get him in this game. They have foiled a couple great opportunities. Be nice to get something before the half. Roy Halu now the back. It's first and ten. He'll take the shotgun run, and Halu with a nice run. He's close to a first down. He also lost the football. Coming out a lot here tonight. And very close to that first down line as Nick Hayden made the stop for Dallas. Let me tell you, the blind pursuit is going to be a factor. If you're a ball carrier in the NFL, especially against Rod Marinelli's defense, you have to protect it even though you don't see anybody. Hayden's going to come out of the stack with great effort. I'm sorry I missed them, but you can see my point. Blind pursuit is where the strips come from. Hayden from behind, able to get it. Kalu now spinning and turning, and he will lose about a yard, maybe two. Justin Durant again is heard from. Man's played Jacksonville and Detroit before here in Dallas. This is more conversation behind the play. Pierre Garcon, who also never backs up from what backs off one of those conversations right in the uh, middle of it. Feisty receivers, and you see number 86 who's just checked into the game, Jordan Reed. Missed a few games early in the season. He's really an outstanding pass receiver. They love to isolate him as they are here on the backside of trips. Very good pass receiver. All three receivers left. There's Reed at the bottom. And there he goes. McCoy looking right at him, and he caught it at midfield. He's brought down by Brandon Carr. The forward progress will make it third and a long five. Well, you're hoping the three cornerbacks go with the three receivers, and you get Reed one-on-one -on -one against the safety. That time, Brandon Carr stayed at home, made a nice break and drive. And that's hard on a cornerback when you have to tackle tight ends. It's a physical mismatch. And a critical third down is six. Expect Dallas to heat up Colt McCoy. It'll come after the two-minute warning. Field goal for Washington in the first. Touchdown for Dallas here in the second. ESPN's Monday Night Football is brought to you by Mercedes-Benz. The best or nothing. NFL.com slash mobile stream live local Sunday and primetime games on your phone. And Subway Restaurant, Subway, train hard, eat fresh. AT&T Stadium, home of a world-class collection of contemporary art. Jim Campbell's exploded view. One of the 56 premier pieces showcased at this stadium. Jerry Jones' wife, Jean Jones, Charlotte Jones Anderson, Jerry's middle child, one of his three children. She's uh, so involved with the team. As the executive vice president, chief brand officer, taking such great pride. This is a... Uh, Wonderful collection of art as part of the game day experience. All challenges initiated by the replay booth inside of two minutes. It's 35. McCoy with time and throws to Roberts. Fought off by Orlando Skandrick. Incomplete and it's fourth down. A lot going on between Deshaun Jackson and Brandon Carr. We'll see what this call is. Yeah, flag comes down late, opposite where the ball was, opposite side of the field. A couple of punches exchanged, one per side. Did they catch both? A 
And all that happened to the quarterback's right as McCoy threw it left to Roberts. You got to keep your poise in a football game. It's seven to three. This is on the verge of ridiculous. If you ask there me. are fouls against both teams that will cause the play to offset and be replayed. Hmm. Illegal hands to the face, defense number number 39. Also, at the conclusion of the play, personal foul, defense number 39, and offense, player number number 7. 11. The penalties, as I said, will offset, replay, third down. Number for Dallas was number 11. Emotions will get the best of you a lot, Mike. Brandon Carr, Deshaun Jackson, there's been a lot going on since the game began. You got to keep your poise in the noise on the road. Deshaun Jackson's played enough football to know better. Again, multiple moving pieces in this Cowboy front has confused this young Redskin offensive line. They've backed out of a lot of these blitz pressure looks. Here they bring them all, and McCoy puts it up top towards Jackson, who couldn't catch it. Orlando Skandrick with the coverage. Jackson looking for the flag. And there is none. Fourth down. Well, you have to give Deshaun Jackson some air. Second time he's gone deep. This time it's Skandrick in one on one. Ball's underthrown. And incomplete. Quick snaps on the punts all night. Here's another one. Tress Way couldn't keep the last one inside the 10. This one is at the 11 where Dwayne Harris will make a fair catch of a 39-yard kick. So Romo will have two timeouts and a minute 42 to try to get Dallas four points on the board. We'll send it to Chris Berman for the Toyota Halftime momentarily. Chris Morton, Adam Schefter will have their insider notes. Big Ben's big day. The quarterback change with the Jets. And a visit with Kirk Herbstreet. The college football top 25 for the playoff by that committee comes out tomorrow. They're meeting here in Texas to discuss that. And we will talk with Herbie about that 11 weeks from tonight. Kirk and Chris Fowler will be standing right where we are as the college football playoffs national championship game will be held right here at AT&T Stadium. And you'll see it right here on ESPN. Kill, kill. Dallas scored on its last drive. Washington gets the ball to start the second half. So Cowboys try to extend the lead here with two timeouts remaining. Romo looked right, it was covered, flipping it to Dunbar out of the backfield. Chased down after a first down gain of a dozen. Keenan Robinson on the stop. Great job by Romo in the pocket. Finding Dunbar one-on-one -on -one with Keenan Robinson. A lot of matchups the Cowboys have in their favor. At tight end, at running back, and at the top of the bottom of the screen with Des Bryant. Merriweather on the pressure. Bryant with the catch. Good open field tackle by David Amerson. Second year man out of NC State. Washington missing Jarvis Jenkins. Been out most of this second quarter with a left foot industry, uh, injury with a left defensive end. Romo second and five is slant incomplete. Trying to get it to Cole Beasley. It was EJ Biggers, the nickel back in on the coverage. EJ Biggers has had his struggles. They were hoping to get Tracy Porter back at the nickel corner position. Haven't got much out of Porter. That time Biggers held his own and on third down is six. I expect pressure from the Redskins. They've had success getting to Romo and it looks like more heat. Look at these hand signals. And signaling over to Des Bryant is at the bottom of the screen. Romo has changed the route. Firing underneath Witten again. The dependable man. First down timeout, Dallas. Nope, they're going to keep going. Beg your pardon. Thought Tony was signaling timeout. The signaling hand signals over to Terrence Williams with 40 left. Thirty-four seconds left is Romo. Finds Witten again. This one to the 42-yard line, and this time they will take the timeout with 27 seconds remaining till halftime. 
pass protection has been stellar against this Redskin front. Other than a couple blitzes that have gotten home, this Cowboy offensive line has dominated in one-on-one -on -one pass protection against these Redskins. Monday night, another NFC East team in action. The Giants, they were off yesterday, three and four, taking on the five and three Colts. Top pick quarterbacks, Andrew Luck, Eli Manning. And you think Eli was sitting back watching Ben Roethlisberger carve up the Colts for 522 yards and six touchdowns. Like, leave a few out there for me next Monday night at 8.15 Eastern. I bet Andy Dalton was wondering what happened. The Bengals That's got right. shut out the That's week right. before against the Colts. Anything goes on any given Sunday, especially on Monday night. Dan Bailey's a very good kicker. Washington only needs about 20 yards to get in his legitimate range. Even 15 yards, you can take a shot with Bailey. Well, Romo and Witten work together so well, not just the completions, but the protections as well. Witten gave him time. Romo, middle shot, incomplete, trying to get it to Des Bryant. John, these young corners are growing up in front of the Washington fans' eyes. They certainly are. Tony Romo has had opportunities to audible to his favorite one-on-one -on -one hand cuts. And so far, Amerson and Breland have held their own. And the Dallas Cowboys need a quick completion, timeout, and try to set up Dan Bailey arguably the best kicker in the NFL. Fourth time Bryant was targeted tonight. First time those two didn't connect. Third and three, Rumble goes in the quick count. Pressure gets to him, and Kerrigan brings him down for a loss of 12. You got to be excited if you're Jay Gruden. Certainly Jim Hazlitt, the defensive coordinator. This defense has confused the Cowboys multiple times as Kerrigan off the left side. On a stunt, beats Parnell for the sack. And sends us to halftime. Three times on third down. Dallas, the best third down conversion team in the league, has seen pressure and sacks by Washington. The Redskins get the ball first, trailing 7-3 here at the half as we send it to Chris Berman in the Toyota halftime. Chris. All right, Michael, thank you. Well, a rivalry, and uh, the underdog has certainly uh, showed up big time. And for the 16th time on a Monday night, it's Cowboys Redskins set to start the second half. The ball belongs to Washington. They trail 7-3. Time for our IBM insights to Marco Murray, 62 yards, just under half of his per game total through the first seven. He needs to go just a little bit ahead of that pace in his final nine games to get to Eric Dickerson's record, 2,105 yards. So Mike Tirico, John Gruden, it's been Murray having some good moments. A couple of key turnovers by Dallas and some missed opportunities from a rusty Colt McCoy for Washington in that first half. Clearly, and the Redskins have to find a running game. They haven't been able to find a running game at all. They missed some opportunities. McCoy has a chance to make a big play down the field. He missed the throw. And he opens the wrong way. Not clear on his audible mechanics. Missed the Sean Jackson. And he missed Roberts on a bad decision that was intercepted. And this is the underthrown ball to Deshaun Jackson. Redskins have had people open. Jordan Reed wide open to the post. Little frustration, obviously, by these Redskin receivers. They need Colt McCoy to make a few plays. You can't be too conservative trying not to turn the ball over and expect a win against the 6-1 and one Dallas Cowboys on the road. Looks like a quarterback who hasn't started a game in three years in the NFL. Understandable. No return, Andre Roberts. We return you to Lisa Salters on the sideline. Hey, Mike. Well, John certainly knows his brother. I asked Jay Gruden how he thinks Colt McCoy is doing so far, and he said that interception, it was just a poor decision. He said it was decisions like that that we told him, that we talked about, told him that we cannot have. And he said then he's underthrown Deshaun Jackson a couple of times. I asked him, was it a matter of timing? He said no, he just short-armed them. Deshaun is fast. He's got to believe in the throw and let it fly. But otherwise, Jay said, we're in good shape. we got to just stick with the game plan and get the running game going. So your brother thinks the same way you do, huh? Hard to believe, isn't it? <laughs> it's a family problem, Mike. <laughs> but he's much easier to deal with than you are. First and ten for Washington at their own 20-yard line. And McCoy stumbles back, climbs forward, takes off a little bit, eludes a tackle, and gets 
about eight yards. Of course, he used those wheels during his Texas days, one of the winningest quarterbacks in college football history. Everything just looks so hard. The ball handling, the timing. Watch him come out of this fake and trip. Once that happens, it's a dead play as far as the quarterback's concerned. you got to get back up the field and get what you can. But handing the ball off, executing simple play-action passes have been difficult for McCoy. Adjusting the second and three play in the noise. It's a right side get. Morris breaks free. Alfred Morris to midfield and beyond. Escorted to the sideline at the 44-yard line. A big first down gain of 29. Nice assist to Colt McCoy. He saw something in the Cowboy defense, and he audibles to the stretch play to the right. It's well blocked. Compton at right tackle did an excellent job, and off goes Morris. But watch Rolando McClain make a poor angle to the ball. Difficult play to stop. The outside zone stretch. Again, adjusting the play. First down, it'll be Mars to the left this time. He'll gain just over four yards. Durant and McLean with the tackle. Got to get Alfred Morris going. His numbers have deteriorated since Robert Griffin has not been under center for obvious reasons, but Morris is capable of carrying the Redskin offense. He's an outstanding back. His production speaks for, for itself. They need to keep beating him. Topic of conversation at Redskin Park. Jay Gruden said the struggles have been a collective effort. Morris said, some of it's on me. I feel like I'm not setting up my blocks well enough. This time it's Roy Halu Jr. with the run. And a gain of three before Rolando McLean takes the tackle. Here are the numbers to what you were just talking about. Almost five yards a carry, and he had 10 or more yards on 15% of his rushes with Griffin as the quarterback. Remember, they came in together. Without Griffin, different story. One yard less per carry, and over 10 yards on only 7%, as opposed to 15% of his rushes. Simple enough, as John saying, the defense has to account for Griffin as a runner. He slows the backside down. You have to account for Griffin. And Morris, at the same time, hard to do. Edge of field goal range, third and two. And Lou is the back. Four-man rush. McCoy's pass is caught by Deshaun Jackson. First down for Washington at the 27-yard line. Just a simple slant pattern. Staple in a Jay Gruden offense. One-on-one, -on -one, Sterling Moore has had trouble with Deshaun Jackson. I'd keep heating up that matchup. If you give him a better throw, Jackson might score. He is as good after the catch as most receivers in the game. But a nice catch, first down Washington. Drive started back at their own 20-yard line. It's a toss left. Getting to the edge is Morris and turning it upfield for the first down at the 15. Flag is down. Barry Church with the tackle. Did he get the edge illegally? Holding offense number 84. 10-yard penalty. Repeat. First down. Niles Paul, the tight end. Tight ends at the point of attack on the outside stretch play are always isolated. Watch him on the second level against Durant, and then he picks up McLean and he just tackled him. That's a terrible play by Niles Paul. And that's what two and five teams do, Mike. They commit critical penalties in critical moments. Jackson had one in the first half. They had an illegal substitution on Paulson. That one hurt him on Niles Paul. Instead of a first down inside the 20, it's first and 20. First and 25, I believe. We have movement. Delay Delay. game. Offense. Five penalty remains. First down. That's hard to swallow. Delay of games, illegal substitutions. Quarterback's got to take charge of the offense in these situations. Important they get something to try to get back into a convertible third down. It's 25. See if they screen or draw to get some of the penalty yardage back. Maybe the draw with Halu. Good move in the open field. Made a man miss. And Roy Hallou Jr. with a nice run. Throwing out of bounds at the 24. He made Barry Church 
swing and miss. That was a nice call by you, Mike. Thank you, John. Draw play. You're going to see Barry Church, the weak side safety, miss an open field tackle. It's the second time tonight Barry Church has failed in one-on-one -on -one tackling situations. And Halu, using the stiff arm, sets up McCoy for a second down and seven. I got so many of your former students here in the <laughs> game on both sides, guys who played for you, coached for you. So you want to bring the next generation of uh, Gruden educated players up. Timeout taken here by Washington. A little frustration shown by some of the guys out there. The operation running not as smoothly as McCoy makes his first start. First time he's spent with these guys in his three years. A little bit of everything. In AT&T Stadium, fans can hang out, watch the game, standing platform there, go back to the screens, the doors over on that side open. Out of the timeout with the confusion again with McCoy involved. Second and seven, this is the opening drive of this second half. Morris is the back, it's a fake to him, and McCoy throwing, it is caught inside the 10, it'll be first and goal as Garcon able to pick it up. So out of first and 25, they come back with Halu and Garcon, and it's first and goal. Play action pass. Garcon one-on-one -on -one, beats Brandon Carr easily to the outside. Again, low throw. Forces Garcon to go down and get it, and it eliminates yards after the catch. Let's see if McCoy can get out of the huddle clean. They've had a lot of problems communicating the plays with McCoy early in his half. Three receivers left. Niles Paul up to the top. They went to Paul in this situation last time. Here they'll run with Morris to the end zone. Opening drive touchdown, and Washington takes the lead. It's an impressive job by this Redskin coaching staff at halftime. They come out in the second half with an array of different plays. They run a zone read, and they fool Spencer. Durant fails to fall back. Walk-in touchdown. Good to see Alfred Morris heat up this running game. Been awful quiet the last couple weeks. Both Morris and Hillou on that drive had their longest runs of the season. Washington ran it on that drive five times to 62 yards. As part of the 80 yards, they take it downfield. And Kai Forbath's extra point. The Redskins on top, 10 to 7. A third of the way through the third. For the third year player out of Florida Atlantic, Alfred Morris, his fourth rushing touchdown of the season. That's eight plays and 80 yards uh, out of halftime to give Washington the lead and answer the eight play 80 yard drive that Dallas had in the second quarter. The third has been the best quarter for Washington this year. They've been very stingy giving up points. And Colt McCoy on his return to Texas, where he was a star at UT over in Austin and grew up about two and a half hours from here in Tuscola, Texas. In the lead in his first start in nearly three years. Now it'll be Dallas's turn as the Cowboys are trying to work on this six game winning streak. Six and one time for the best record in the league. High four bath. The kickoff. Dwayne Harris will catch it and take off with it. Harris across the 20 to the 23-yard line, directly across from us in AT&T Stadium. In the owner's box is the owner, the president, the general manager of the Cowboys, Jerry Jones. Jerry, as uh, has happened over your 25 years in this rivalry, doesn't matter what your record is when Washington and Dallas meet. Mike, it's been a great rivalry, and particularly on Monday Night Football. I know you know the league just gets excited when this game comes, but the Redskins and the Cowboys have had the privilege of playing it a lot of times, and we've had some great matchups. Yeah, it's great memories, too. It's the 16th Redskin-Cowboy game on Monday night. Talk to Jerry here during this drive as Dallas takes over at the 22-yard line. Romo 12 of 19 for 172 yards in this first half. Gives it to Murray, running right. DeMarco gains about three. Jerry, you said before this season it was young. It might be an uphill battle when you were out in California training camp. But the makeup of this team that has helped this great start. Well, I think you get your personality. It's often been said from your offensive line. And this offensive line has exceeded our expectations. And they're young. Uh, they're talented. 
uh, and they really are, frankly, what Tony Romo deserves, uh, especially uh, since he's had a career of uh, trying to be Romo and be chased around a little bit. You said that uh, when we talked on the podcast this week, uh, what you wanted to do, surround Romo, to give him time to do things like that, get it to Cole Beasley at a first down at the 37-yard line. What about Tony, Jerry, and uh, his success this season, not having to be Superman on every snap? Well, first of all, Tony's one of the uh, real, real knowledgeable uh, offensive minds, and either on our staff or, frankly, most staffs. And he's got a real sense, a real feel for timing, and uh, he recognizes what a running game and, of course, what protection will do for him. But there's no one that appreciates uh, this offensive line more than Tony does. And, of course, Scott Linehan, his offensive coordinator, has been just a, a real uh, great compliment to what Tony Romo is as a quarterback. Murray over there to the left, no gain. Are you always this calm and relaxed in that box during the games, Jerry? Well, I'll tell you, I'm, I'm glad it's showing that because that's not the way it is. I think my knees are going 100 miles an hour. <laughs> well, we're going to let... We're but every, every play is the last play of the franchise history. I'll tell you, I live and breathe it. We're going to let you sit back and enjoy the rest. Thanks for a few minutes. Great, Mike. Another great visit down here. Thank you, Jerry. Jerry Jones, owner, general manager, president of the Dallas Cowboys. Great to talk to him in game there. It's second and 11. Deflected by Murphy, who almost came up with the interception. So Ryan Kerrigan, the opposite outside linebacker, has done that multiple times in his Redskins career. And Murphy almost had a pick six. You got to be ready for these quick screens and these no back sets. Nice play by Murphy, and he tracked this ball all the way. I'm shocked he didn't catch it. Looked like Curse almost knocked it out of Murphy's hands, and Jay Gruden can't believe it. Long yardage situation. Here comes the Redskins. They've been bluffing this all-out blitz or bringing it. What's it going to be? Washington's three sacks all on third down. This is third and 11. They bring the pressure again. Free runner gets Rolo for the fourth time. It's Keenan Robinson who turns Tony down and Romo maybe shake it up. An all-out blitz. They don't have enough blockers, and Romo went down hard, Mike. Romo got twisted to the ground as he was trying to elude Robinson coming straight through the middle. Take a look at Robinson. It's an all-out blitz. I'm surprised that he did not change this protection. They're one short. Turns his back there. And gets twisted to the ground. And he the took, athletic training staff and a doctor out there looking at him. Took a Toradol shot last week mm -hmm. against the Giants. Let's keep an eye on that, Mike. We're back. Tony Romo has stayed down on his back most of the entire time we were in break. And they're looking back at that very similar spot to where he had that micro discectomy, disc operation on his back. Injured against the Redskins last year finished that game but watch the torque here as he gets the knee in the back in that area Where he had that surgery back in December last year Remember he missed the last game missed a good part of the offseason training camp as Robinson came through clean on the pressure and Sacked him Romo just stayed down and was in pain was communicating with the team doctor and now is just getting up to his feet And this reaction from the crowd he's in tremendous pain This is one tough cowboy, Mike. He had a punctured lung a couple years ago, broken ribs. He's played through numerous injuries. It's great to see him up walking. Meanwhile, Brandon Whedon, the backup quarterback, has to be ready on short notice. Haven't seen him play yet in a regular season as a cowboy. His last pass, December 1st of last year, with Cleveland, Jerry Jones looked very emotional there. As you saw him, you, you know about the history of this injury with the back with Romo. It's such a concern. That ball, that punt goes out of bounds around the 20. This was the game we talked about last year, week 16 against Washington. All the pain, it was just hard to watch, and Romo stayed in, stayed through, as the Cowboys were able to win at Washington. But then we find out a couple of days later that uh, the pain worsened once he returned home, said it was the most pain he's ever felt in a game. And Friday, just six days after that game, Dr. Drew Dossett performed that micro discectomy, and now Romo 
is going back to the Cowboy locker room and a sudden 180 within the game and the season here for Dallas halfway through the third on the fourth sack of the night for Washington. Defense needs to step up. Melton knocked the ball out, fell on the ball. There's no whistle. It's at the five and on the Morris fumble. The official is winding the clock. He says nothing regarding a fumble there. Now here comes Tony Correnti to the Pulling mic. on the field was the runner was down by contact. Second down. And he should be. It's the correct call. There was just no whistle or no reaction by any of the officials out there. Henry Melton looks like the Henry Melton of old. The Chicago Bear days. He shot a gap and rejected that stretch play. That's how you stop that running scheme. Get some penetration from your defensive tackles. Great work by Henry Melton. Second and 16. Roy Hallou is now in there at the back after the Morris loss of the football. It's quickly out to Niles Paul. Will gain six at the 20 seed. Dallas going after the ball every time. Meantime, the focus and attention of the Cowboys fans and organization right there as Romo's made the walk through the sports bar, through the tunnel. Now we'll get checked on, and Jason Garrett is starting to think about life with Jerry Jones' backup quarterback, Brandon Whedon, who ironically enough ended up in Cleveland after the Colt McCoy time in Cleveland came to an end. Dallas has checked into their dime defense. Six defensive backs, only one linebacker. They're going to play the pass exclusively in this long yardage situation. Will they bring pressure on third and not? Rushing four, McCoy throwing sideline. Roberts couldn't get there, incomplete. Brandon Carr didn't give him much room to complete the pass, and it's a big three and out by the Dallas defense. Nice coverage by Carr. It's a tight slot. They try to confuse the Cowboys with the release pattern, and Brandon Carr shows his veteran savvy. Nice coverage. Press way with the punt. Oh. A bomb. Rocket shot. Harris in the 25. Dwayne Harris will use the sideline and get out of bounds at the 40-yard line. So it gives good field position. The 31-year-old Brandon Wheat, the old Oklahoma State Cowboy, now playing for the Dallas Cowboys. ESPN's Monday Night Football is brought to you by IBM. Today, there's a new way to work, and it's made with IBM. All the old spice products which you should use all over your body. And Autotrader.com, land a great deal on your perfect car at Autotrader.com. Coverage from Spider Cam tonight is brought to you by DirecTV. Tony Romo re-injures his back. And Brandon Wheaton makes his Dallas Cowboys debut. First round pick of the Cleveland Browns in 2012. 22nd overall pick. First three years with Cleveland. Started five games last year. Now takes over and gives it to DeMarco Murray. That settles in a game. Murray inside the 30. Accelerates to the 20. Murray at the 10. First and goal, Dallas at the 5. Haven't seen that run all night. Credit Bill Callahan. And this offensive line going to pull both guards. Murray steps to his right, comes back to his left. Leary on the kick out. Zach Martin does an excellent job up in the hole. And they fooled Washington. And that's what you expect Murray to do. And he gets a crease. Turn on the gas. Beautiful thing. 51 on the game. Eighth straight game to start the season with over 100 yards. Murray's over 1,000. Eight games into the season. First and goal, Dallas. It's Murray to the right. Finally touched down by Ryan Clark, who chased him down on that 51-yard run. It'll be at the three-yard line. Stay persistent with, persistent with the running game. You're going to have some bad runs in the early part of football games, but let DeMarco Murray wear you down. There you go, John. The eighth player in NFL history gets to the 1,000-yard mark. At the halfway point here in the season, 15 career 100-yard games now, eight in a row to start this season, and most importantly, giving Dallas an opportunity to retake the lead. 
to Des Bryant. Rashad Breeland gave no window for a potential Oklahoma State to Oklahoma State touchdown. This is a running play, and Brandon Whedon has the freedom to hand signal to either one of his big receivers. Bryant scored in the first half on the same pattern, but Emerson played off. This time, Breeland went up and challenged him and did a great job taking on Des Bryant, third and goal. I mentioned earlier, Robo skips a day in practice to protect that back, so Wheaton does get time with the first teamers. The pressure comes. He looks to Bryant. Des couldn't hang on, and Bashad Breland is showing up here tonight. I'll say, all out blitz. Breland plays inside technique, and he beats Bryant to the junction of this slant. That's why you like long arm corners. Back to back, impact plays by the rookie, Bashad Breland. D'Angelo Hall went out with the Achilles injury. He went in. Des Bryant saying to me, I got to make that play. Speaking of makes, Dan Bailey makes most everything he looks at. The threshold is 100 minimum attempts for accuracy. No kicker more accurate in league history than that man. Bailey knocks through a chip shot. Our game is tied in this eventful third quarter at 10 apiece. Those of you just tuning in, the turning point in this game, perhaps in the Cowboys' great start to the season on this play, a free rusher coming through. Keenan Robinson, the fourth sack of the night on Tony Romo, all on third down, but maybe more significantly, the back. No idea what the severity is for a while. Romo able to get up after about two minutes on the turf and walk off, pointing back to that spot where he had the second consecutive year of back surgery. And while these coaches and players stay in the moment, of trying to win this game and get a seventh straight win. You know, somewhere in their minds, they're wondering, where is their leader? How is he? And the other players who have to pick it up without Tony Romo. Bailey's field goal squares the game at 10. Four minutes to the third. And Andre Roberts will take a knee. Well, Romo's the popular guy in Texas for the moment. Colt McCoy is back near where he grew up. Population's just over 700 in Tuscola, Texas. His hometown, 180 miles west of here on I-20, south of Abilene. Total area of seven-tenths of a square mile. Most of that town shut down tonight. Colt McCoy back there at Jim Ned High School. He grew up a Cowboy fan. He was at the University of Texas. Got to meet some of the Cowboy legends like uh, Roger Staubach. And his family has uh, made the trip over along with a lot of other folks in Tuscola. His dad, Brad, his high school coach at Jim Ned High School, took him to a state championship game. There in that Redskins shirt on the right. Would he have ever thought he'd come to a Cowboy game wearing Redskins colors to watch his son? Full start, offense number 68. Five yard penalty, remains first down. And they're living every snap of what might be one of the rare opportunities for him to start here. Because Robert Griffin is in the bullpen, getting close to getting ready. So it's maybe one or two opportunities for McCoy. But, John, too many mistakes by Washington on the offensive end here tonight. Well, they've had trouble at right tackle, Mike. Tyler Columbus bench tonight. That time, Compton, number 68, former six-rounder. Illegal procedure can't happen. So from the 15, it's Morris Wright. One yard. Justin Durant. Field position has been an issue all year for the Redskins. And when you commit penalties on the road, crowd noise becomes a problem. Let's see if Colt McCoy can communicate clearly in the huddle. The Redskins have had some problems with their third string quarterback getting everybody on the same page. Roy Halou's the back, and he's split out to the top. Second and 14. McCoy getting it out of his hands quick to Garcon. So tough after the catch. Here to 25, it'll be third and five. He's a training reel after the catch. It's just a hitch route on the outside. But watch him catch the ball. No wasted motion, north and south, and finish for positive yardage. He's a physical man. Third down at six. 
More confusion from the Redskins. They might need a timeout. They have 12 guys on the field there. Now Paul's coming off to make it 11. But they were never huddled with the 11, so it's okay. They had to freeze it there to give Washington the chance to sub and match if they so chose. They did not. They have the matchup they want at the bottom of the screen. Reed against Wilcox. McCoy surveys, comes back to Halu, got the first down. Durant tackles him at the 30. That's halfback choice, and Roy Halu is the halfback that runs the choice. Very good pass receiver. He's going to come out of the backfield and have a two-way go against Justin Durant, who's one-on-one -on -one in coverage with help from McClain. That time, Halu beat a double. Nice work by Colt McCoy sliding in the pocket. I love watching uh, Harry Melton walk past McCoy at the end of that one. As we said before, they were Texas teammates as Longhorns. Melton almost got to his former buddy, and Melton was a running back. Morris again to the 35-yard line. Redskins got to get back in the huddle. Garcon got hurt that time. Here comes Santana Moss. But the Redskins got to get in and out of the huddle quicker to give McCoy time at the line of scrimmage. Let's see what ails Garcon. Rare appearance for Santana Moss. He's only played four snaps all year, one against Arizona, three against Tennessee. In Monday night, Cowboy Redskin lore, Moss is a significant factor. Ta caught two touchdowns within the last four minutes of a game to win for Washington. Their last win at Dallas. McCoy retreats, screen, Morris made a man miss, made another one miss, wow. and Alfred Morris working on his own to get the first down at the 47. Boy, Rolando McClain has to make this tackle. He's been stellar so far this season, but watch number 55, clean as a whistle on this screen pass, just whip. Can't duck your head against Alfred Morris. He saw it the whole way, shot his gun, and just whipped. And Alfred Morris will burn you. First and ten, play action pass. Shot downfield to Deshaun Jackson. Separating and hauling it in. Jackson inside the ten. First and goal, Washington. How about that throw? Colt McCoy, he listened to Jay Gruden at halftime. He says, I'll cut it loose. He didn't measure that throw. It's an angle route. Deshaun Jackson starts hard to the inside. He angles to the back pylon, and that's on the money. More yards for Washington in the third quarter than the whole half. Through three. All easy, even a 10 in Dallas. ESPN, celebrating 45 years of Monday Night Football. Off we go to the fourth quarter here in Arlington, Texas. Mike Tirico, John Gruden, Lisa Salters. Lisa keeping watch over by the Dallas locker room for any medical updates on Tony Romo, who injured his back in the third. Washington averaged 10 yards a play in that third quarter at 173 total yards. Colt McCoy has him in the red zone trying to retake the lead. Give it to Morris. And only a yard there as he's pulled down by George Selvey, one of the many free agent pickups on this defense over the last couple of years as they try to piece together a defensive line that's going to be called on here because Washington's run the ball effectively in the second half. Well, they ran the zone read on the previous play, the same one Morris scored on earlier, but the Redskins are in a spread attack. McCoy, quick snap. Big hit by J.J. Wilcox on Niles Paul, keeping Paul to almost no game. Snapped it on a quick count. They tried to use a tight formation to free Niles Paul, and J.J. Wilcox says hello. Jordan Reed checked back into the game. Expect Washington to try to isolate Reed. He's the biggest target and the most reliable red zone target in these situations.
Quarterback draw, McCoy, touchdown! Oh my, what a call on third and goal from the six. No back set. <laughs> and Cole McCoy's got to be careful. They've had enough problems keeping their quarterbacks healthy. Jordan Reed gets a block. It's just a quarterback draw all the way. You see Dallas playing pass. Reed gets the block on Rolando McClain, and Colt McCoy sells out in his home state, Mike. That's impressive by Colt McCoy. Cowboy injured at the back end of the play as they were diving towards McCoy and trying to stop him at the goal line but the second rushing touchdown of colt mccoy's career orlando skandrick was the player who got caught up in the many defenders diving as they were all surprised by the run by mccoy up the middle well one thing that we talked to colt about last night his legs yep it was a big part of what he was able to do at texas as we said one of the top winning quarterbacks in college football history left FBS football bowl subdivision as the winningest quarterback Kellen Moore of Boise State surpassing him a few years later Four back the extra point flag down on the back end as there's a late hit And the intensity of the rivalry continues to be seen after the whistle on both sides Although players are so transient in this era they're very aware of the history between these teams. Jay Gruden and the Washington side showing the Redskins the extra point some history this week. After the extra point, personal foul, unnecessary roughness, defense number 92. This 15-yard penalty will be assessed on the kickoff. So the kickoff will come from midfield in the state of Texas. Yeah, I used to put up the hook'em horns for a whole bunch of residents of this state. Has a bumming right now. 17-10, Washington. Washington has taken the lead. You see Jerry Jones down on the sidelines. Come down from the owner's box after the injury to Tony Romo. This happening early in the third quarter. Man has had back surgery the last two years. Taking that shot, Lisa Salters has hustled back to the Cowboy locker room area. Well, Mike, I've been told that uh, Tony Romo is still in the process of being evaluated by doctors. But as you said, Jerry Jones uh, went into the locker room a short while ago, and he just came out, and I was able to chat with him for a quick second. He said that there's a chance that Tony Romo might actually return to this game. He said Romo is back there now telling them that he wants to return to the game. So we'll have to see what happens. Okay, Lise, good hustle. Thank you. So then Jerry has stayed down there. You walk right out from the locker room through that tunnel at the 50 to the sideline, and there having a word with his head coach Jason Garrett about what's going on in the interim Brandon Whedon quarterback of the team to kick off from midfield at four just bangs it through the uprights and Dallas will take over at their own 20 yard line so the Brandon Whedon story many of you in these parts know it from Oklahoma State much like Des Bright they were both walk-ons he was a first round pick of Mike Holmgren in Cleveland when they decided to move on from the Colt McCoy era he's the oldest player ever taken that was the five years he spent in the Yankees organization as a pitcher in baseball came back to OSU with great success there did not have the success on that merry-go-round that is the quarterback position in Cleveland one of the 30 quarterbacks Cleveland's had in the last 30 years he ends up here as the backup in Dallas. Murray to the right, and he gains five yards. John, you know Murray well, or rather uh, Whedon well. You had him at QB camp when he came out. He's got a great arm. We all know about the pitching background. He's got a cannon. He was in a strange offense, like a lot of these college quarterbacks, and it didn't work out in Cleveland. And he's got an opportunity to prove his worth for these Dallas Cowboys. They've had success running the ball while he's been in a game, surprisingly. Murray up to 124 yards. This out of an empty set. Pass is complete. The tight end, James Hanna. That's his first catch of the year. And it picks up a Dallas first down. Brandon Whedon, comfortable in a no-huddle spread system. It'll be interesting to see how he handles the huddle and all the different personnel groupings that the Cowboys use. Here are three tight ends. Expect a run inside to Murray. 
put Randall in the game this time. Joseph Randall is the back. And like you said, the inside run. They were ready for it. Kerrigan couldn't make the tackle. And Randall's pounded on the sideline by Amerson. The young corners of Washington, a big story this evening. Got to have a lot of tendencies when Randall's in the game. It's about 90% run. They're going to run a counter play. Guard and tight end pull to the left. It smelled out pretty good by this Redskin defense. And they gang up on Randall on the sideline. Press a tackle by Emerson. That's uncommon for a corner. After the gain of three, Randall's still the back. It's play action to him. Mm -hmm. A shot to the right is hauled in by Williams. First down, Terrence Williams just shy of midfield. Good call by Scott Linehan. It's an isolation play pass. Maximum protection, one-on-one -on, -one on the outside. And Brandon Reedon rips it. It's hard to say that. <laughs> There's Terrence Williams. He has made a lot of big catches in the fourth quarter for Dallas. Back to DeMarco Murray as the back. Oh, they missed exchange on the handle, and Murray's able to get back on it. He's still working at the bottom of the pile. You hear the, ref, the officials say it's over. White ball, so Murray able to hop on the missed exchange from the backup quarterback. Well, the lack of practice time, I've been saying it for a long time. The lack of repetitions with your backup quarterback and the first string offense is a problem. And it's a problem on routine plays. I'll bet Brandon Whedon hasn't ball handled that run since August. Officially, that goes as a Whedon fumble. He's the last player to possess it. Murray falls back on it, but it's a loss of five. Trying to set up the screen. Here goes DeMarco. What a block downfield from the rookie, Zach Martin. Freeing the first down run by Murray. The Golden Domer, the guard, Zach Martin. The big block on that play. Jerry Jones played right guard at Arkansas. He's got to love what Zach Martin does for him here. He sets the screen. How about this second level block on Perry Riley? It sets up Murray and Jason Witten threw a downfield block as well. How about Jason Witten? He could care less about statistics. All he does is play tight end as well as anybody that's ever played it. 20 touches, 205 total yards from Murray tonight. He gets a break. Randall runs. And a good gain of eight yards on first down to the 25. And that offensive line strength, John, screens and running the ball with the backup quarterback in. Boy, we're seeing that amplified in this second half. This Dallas offensive line reminds me of the line that they had in their glory days. I remember Eric Williams, Stepnoski, 2 and A in my nightmares. And there's similar tonnage up front for this Cowboy outfit. Big to Randall. Good pass protection for Wheaton. There is Witten. Dallas touchdown. That's a great drive. Credit Brandon Whedon and credit Scott Linehan in the play calling. Unbelievable clear out by Dwayne Harris, number 17. He shot off the ball like lightning, and two Redskins doubled him, and they forgot about the nine-time Pro Bowler Jason Witten. Down the goal line, knee down as he just crosses the front of the plane and possesses it past the front of the plane and then loses possession. That should hold up for career touchdown number 54 for Jason Witten. And his first one from Whedon. Bailey. Tie in. Only Tony Gonzalez. More receptions, four yards as a tight end all time than Jason Witten, who just scored the game tying touchdown for Dallas. Romo gets hurt. Brandon Whedon with his first action as a Cowboy leads back-to-back -back scoring drives. A field goal and then a touchdown to Jason Witten. He's near the top of every list when you count tight ends. And as John said, the real deal, he blocks 
That one hit the crossbar on the fly. Watch the great pass over. protection, Mike, and it's a beautiful clear out at the top of the screen. You're going to see two Redskins double Harris to the post, and nobody covers Jason Witten to the corner. They pick up the blitz. Washington blows a coverage, and you have to credit Dwayne Harris for clearing out the deep zone. Jason Witten, one of the all-time great Dallas Cowboys. Tony Romo said that earlier this month, he might be the best Cowboy of all time. Jerry Jones amplified, says he's one of the top five men I've met in my quarter century in the NFL. Owner, executive, player, special guy. Morris the run. He gains three yards. Interesting, on a night where we've had three turnovers, a couple giving teams short field. We've had long touchdown drives. All four touchdown drives in this game have gone 80 yards, including the one capped off by McCoy the last time Washington had the ball. What's the credit to both of these coaching staffs for being able to function with backup quarterbacks yeah. in primetime TV? Second down and seven. Deshaun Jackson has been a thorn in the Cowboys' side. Keep an eye on him in the slot. Pitch. Morris right. Got out of one tackle. Put his head down. And it's a couple yards shy of the first down. Ran into Barry Church. And it was Hayden, Nick Hayden, who finished it off. You want to play safety in the NFL, you got to make these kind of tackles against these kind of backs. Just listen to this at real speed. Mm. NFL football. You think this isn't an important rivalry? Take a look at that play. Take a look at this place. Third and two pistol, fake to Halu. McCoy ran for a touchdown last time, gets a first down this time. I think he did that on his own. I think they want to run Morris to the left. He saw Skandrick playing around over here on the left side. He says, you know what, I'm just going to keep it and not tell anybody. Got he called by Colt McCoy, and that's the second time he has hurt Dallas with his legs, and Jay Gruden said he brings that element that we have been missing without Robert Griffin. Halfway through the fourth. Good numbers from McCoy, who's gotten better as the night has gone on. His first start in three years. Flush. Nobody is on this side to throw it to, but he used the pump to avoid a sack and turn it into a game. These play action passes where you keep the tight end in. Max protect two man routes. If you don't fool them, there's nowhere to go with the football. Pierre Garçon, I'm surprised they didn't call that on the Cowboys for illegal contact. And so is he. You see his hands up in the air. Oh, they called it earlier on Brandon Merriweather. I think Dallas got away with one there, second and eight. The boy with time. Roberts can't hold on as Rolando McLean was waiting there for him. That's where he'd like to see Colt McCoy reset and get to his check down. Roberts is clearly covered. And Rolando McLean, who missed a tackle earlier, redeems himself. That's a PBU, Mike. Mike, pass is broken up, third down and eight. Dallas has been playing a lot of zone coverage tonight, trying to get help on Deshaun Jackson, and there's more confusion. Got to hurry. It's inside of 10 seconds. McCoy's pass is complete. Reed dives forward, and Jordan Reed able to get the first down by a half a yard. That's a gutty play on the sideline. Ball's thrown in the flat. Reed catches it, controls it away from his body, and he dives for the stake for a critical first down. Washington been disjointed. Obvious reasons with your third quarterback. They must get out of the huddle quicker at crunch time to give McCoy time to see the defense. Hey, Halfway through the fourth, Santana Moss is in the game. No, scoop him, scoop him. Scoop. 
McCoy eludes the sack, keeps it alive. It'll be a loss of two. And you see five Cowboys running from all over. It's the trademark of this team. Meantime, there's Tony Romo in the back in conversation with the Cowboys medical staff. Their longtime PR man, Rich Dalrymple, back there as well. Romo looks like he's in negotiation, trying to work his way back to the field. I wonder what Jason Garrett would do. Whedon has led them to 10 points. A field goal and a touchdown in his two drives. Five and a half left. Fourth quarter. Five in the pattern on second and 11. McCoy got it rid of it. Jackson. Two and a half shy of the first down, but it's another third and manageable as McCoy got knocked down at the end of the play. A lot of stunts from this defensive line of the Cowboys. And the Cowboys are playing a lot of zone coverage. Two deep and five underneath. They're forcing Washington to pass protect, and they're going to see if McCoy can get the alternate receivers. Third down and two. Keep an eye on Jordan Reed. Number 86. He's been a go-to receiver in these third and medium situations the last couple weeks. Dallas rushes four. McCoy gets rid of it quick in the open field. Can't make it. The play is Reed as Orlando Skandrick made the better play. Four and a half left. Fourth down right around midfield. He's definitely a bit short. I think he's going to go for it. It's Jordan yep. Reed, a go-to receiver in a short yardage situation. What a play by Orlando Skandrick. In a one-on-one -on -one tackling situation with the game on the line. Offensive personnel on the field showing to go for it. Play clock at 15. They're going to run out of time here. So Jay Gruden not going to rush it. He's going to walk out to the official and take a timeout. Well, they're going to reset a repump of the play clock there, which was interesting because the clock was down at 14 earlier. And a reset to 25. And Jay's going to let it run down to about 345 or so and burn the second of his three timeouts. Going to find his fullback, Darrell Young. Make sure Alfred Morris is heated up. Fourth and one, it's decision time. Romo has walked back on the field just to add to the drama in the setting of the Cowboys and the Redskins circa 2014. This was in the timeout. Almost everybody from the medical staff talking to Romo, trying to negotiate his way in. He's warming up on the sideline. It's fourth and one Washington. You like the call, John? I love it. Run left behind Trent Williams. McCoy, play action. He throws out of the backfield. It's Young, the fullback. Darrell Young. What a gutsy call for the first down on fourth and one. Well, my brother only calls me when he wants to ask about failure. <laughs> He's won a lot of games as a coach. He hasn't made many more difficult calls than this one. Spider two wide banana. Darrell Young for a critical first down. Because, as always, the fullback in the flat is the <laughs> primary receiver. Let's not go there Let's again. Let's find a 2-1 banana. But you say Jay's won a lot of games his first year as an NFL head coach. But he's coaching the AFL and the UFL. The quarterback championship teams in the Arena League as well. Two-yard run for Alfred Mars. They were looking for a face mask call there. None called. Here's Lisa Salters on Romo. Lisa? Well, Mike, they're still saying that Tony Romo's return is questionable, but you can see just like I can, Romo is trying to get back into this game. Jerry Jones told me when he came out of that locker room, Jerry Jones said Tony Romo says he wants to get back into this game. So whether they let him get back in there or not remains to be seen, but the person he was talking to on the sidelines and rather heatedly at times it looked like was the team physician, Dr. Dave, Dr. Dan Cooper. So we'll see if they'll let him get back into this ballgame. Approaching the two-minute warning. Second and nine, Lisa. It's a toss. Mars to the right. Heading to the side. It stays inbounds at the 31-yard line with 2.16 left. He comes out of bounds. And Very Rondo. close to field goal range, too, now here, John, in a tie game. Excuse me. Rondo McClain came from nowhere. And Morris showed a burst. Watch number 55 turn it on. Just not enough to get to Alfred Morris. 
Keep an eye on number 86. I'll say it again. Jordan Reed is the go-to target. Most of these Redskin receivers lack size. Other than Garcon, 88. Look for Jordan Reed at the bottom of the screen. A drive with two third down conversions and a fourth down conversion. A drive that's taken half the fourth quarter. And a flag here. Delay a game. Delay a game. Offense. Five yard penalty. Remains third down. And that takes you not only to third and ten, but takes you back to the 37. And from there, a field goal would be 55 yards, and Forbath's career long is 50. Twice. Oh, the timeout has to come from the sideline, or it's got to come from the quarterback. Delay a game in that situation, painful. They're in field goal range. But this is a long way to go. Let's see if Rod Marinelli brings some fire. Third and 10, McCoy in trouble, and he's finally brought down. Jeremy Mincy gets there. And at the 32, they were in field goal range with the delay of game and the sack. The second one by Dallas tonight pushes Washington back at the two-minute warning. All tied at 17 with a fourth down decision to vote. ESPN's Monday Night Football is brought to you by Miller Lite. Back in its original look, it's Miller time. Toyota, let's go places. And NFLshop.com, order today and get a special offer at the official store of the NFL. So here comes Tony Romo, 97 yards away. Remember Dan Bailey, an excellent field goal kicker for, for Dallas with a career long of 56. So get it around the 40 and they'll have a chance. But Romo, who's been out for the majority of this half, the last two drives, I'd expect a screen pass or something quick. I can't imagine Romo pushing it on his first attempt back from that injury. Could be some story. Starts with a three. They'll hand it to Murray on the inside. DeMarco Murray gives him space out to the 11-yard line. Washington pulling at the ball. Murray's put it down earlier. Lost a fumble his fifth this year. Tony Romo has been running a two-minute drill in Dallas for a long time. You're going to see a lot of hand signals. Some of them will be late once he recognizes the defense. Second and one. There's a blitz coming. Merriweather's going to get to it. Romo lost the football. And Washington's on it with Kerrigan. Now does Dallas have it? Kerrigan lost it at the bottom of the pile. Unbelievable. Merriweather's pressure. Parnell at the bottom saves the day for Dallas. Romo has not seen a Redskin blitz tonight. He has been leveled time and time again, and DeMarco Murray blew the pickup. Oh, my goodness. Kerrigan is all over that ball. It's third and eight. Washington should use a timeout. If they don't pick it up here, there's a timeout taken. They're going to review this play. Interesting. So all the time runs off. Now we get to review here with 59 seconds left. The booth buzzing down. They want to take a look at it. After the Merriweather pressure and the ball comes out to determine if it was a fumble or an incomplete pass, perhaps. Be right back. After reviewing the play, the ruling of a fumble will stand with the recovery by Dallas. It will be Dallas football. The clock will start on my signal. It's clear that it's a fumble as Merriweather gets the ball and Romo. The ball comes out. There was an empty hand. Kerrigan was on it, and then it squirted out, and Murray comes up with a clear recovery for Dallas. Clock remains at 59 seconds. You see Kerrigan's there. He's underneath, but never has control and possession of the ball as it's squirting up his arm. So they look at that and determine that it is Dallas ball, John, in third down. Just under a minute left. Redskins with a stop must take an immediate timeout. They have one left. And it looks like Jim Hazlitt has backed off in coverage. The Redskins have 
pounded Tony Romo tonight with blitzes. So the clock starts on the ready for play. It begins to turn again inside of a minute. Washington brings five. Romo's in the end zone. He's trying to get out. He throws on the run, and it is caught by Williams for the first down. Terrence Williams pulls it from Bashad Breland. Breland has the interception. Kerrigan has the fumble recovery, and they get neither. What wow. a play by Terrence Williams, snap, snatching the football away from Breland for an unbelievable Cowboy first down. With 42 seconds remaining, the ball's at the 23-yard line. They get up to around the 40-yard line of Washington, so they need 37 yards or so to try to get in the range of Dan Bailey, who, as we said, is a tremendous kicker. And most importantly, I was impressed the way Tony Romo moved around in the pocket. I thought he might be a sitting duck after that injury to his back, but he showed plenty of mobility on that throw, Mike. Although he looked like Fred Sanford coming over to the sidelines afterwards like he could barely walk. Jerry Jones has gone back upstairs to the owner's box. Here they come again. The Redskins have showed this all-out blitz all night. Will they bring it or will they bluff it? The disguises have hurt Dallas. Now Frank Kirsch jumping around on the defensive front. They're coming. Romo got rid of it quick. Caught by Williams. Tackled by Breland. 27-yard line, Dallas, two timeouts left, and Jason Garrett's trying to use that second timeout. It finally gets the officials' attention with 34 seconds remaining. Jim Hazlitt, Jay Gruden, bringing an all-out blitz with 35 seconds left. They bring the house. They bring one more than Dallas has. This time, Tony Romo gets rid of it before the rush hits him. And it's great open field tackling by Bashad Breeland. That takes guts. I saw Rex Ryan do it a few weeks ago against the Bears. Mm -hmm. When you call right. an all-out right. blitz against the Dallas Cowboys, you're leaving a rookie corner one-on-one -on -one with Des Bryant. You're re leaving a safety one-on-one -on -one potentially with Jason Witten. I expect Hazlitt to call it again. He may not bring it. He may bluff it. The combination of those two things have really been a problem for Dallas. Four extra seconds put on the clock. That's when the timeout was called. The lack of mobility by Romo, does that make you more likely to bring that pressure in this situation? Absolutely. Just yeah. make sure that yeah. you're very careful in your coverage, and that blitz has to get there if you bring it. Dallas spreads it. Four receivers. Second and five. Again, the pressure comes. Rid of it quick. Williams going to get blocks. He'll get close to the first down as Biggers brings him down. They're forcing Dallas to throw these quick screens to beat the blitz. I'm surprised they haven't used the maximum protection of some kind. Short of the first down, it's third. And one, and Romo about to get hit. He threw it where there's no receiver. Washington looks for intentional grounding, and that flag is thrown. That'll be a loss of down and fourth down. Intentional grounding. Offense, number nine, no receiver in the area, quarterback was under pressure. This is a loss of down, fourth down. Take it back to their own 23-yard line. Clark comes right off the right side, number 25. I am shocked that Dallas did not bring in an extra tight end and try to use a max protection. Redskins brought every man they had on three consecutive plays. Gutty call it. Romo uh, Garrett both questioning with the officials if that was grounding, but that's that's the definition of it. Sometimes you get receivers not communicating the same page with a quarterback, but that one was just under pressure there. So the conversation with the officials just to confirm where they are, the ball marked back of the 22. By Washington, the clock will remain dead until the, the snap. See if Andre Roberts can set up a bomb for Forbath. The Redskin place kicker. Getting rid of it quickly is Chris Jones. Andre Roberts back at the 28-yard line. Roberts looking to the sideline to get out of bounds. And he does at the 31. Just seven seconds remaining. And we are staring at overtime. 
with Dallas and Washington. Well, this is a down-down situation. You throw the ball to a receiver, and you say, as soon as you catch it, go down immediately and take a timeout. Would you take, do you think at the 31, you take a shot to try to get some yards here? I try to push a slant in there and get a catch ball down at the 50 and set up a Hail Mary. But they're going to play for overtime. They're taking the victory play. I think it's wise. Dallas beat Houston in overtime 20 to 17 earlier this year. Washington has not played it overtime yet this season. You see Scott Linehan talking to Tony Romo, not only about his health now, he talked to him about the blitz pickups and the protection audibles and what we have to do to block these Redskins. We have Des Bryant, we have all our receivers over there, and let's see if they can make an adjustment and win this football game. Captains come out for the coin toss. We'll refresh and review the overtime rules that have been in play for the last couple of years before we get going here at OT. Captains, as we go to overtime, there will be one overtime period played. Each team will be allowed one opportunity to possess the ball. After the first possession, the first team to score wins. However, if the first team to possess the ball does score a touchdown, the game will be over. Each team will be allowed two timeouts, and all replay reviews will come from upstairs. Washington, as visitors, will call the toss. Number 97, this is a head, this is a tail. What will your call be? Number 97 calls. Heads. It is heads. You win the toss. They want football. Please put yourself over there. Washington, Washington, Washington called heads to start the game. Won the toss. They do it again. And Colt McCoy, maybe his one start, give a chance to beat Romo and the Cowboys in Dallas. Overtime. When do we come back? So we go to overtime in this 109th meeting. 107th in the regular season between Washington and Dallas with Tony Correnti explained to the players one more time Will you touch down or a safety on that first possession can win the game We saw that yesterday with a pick six to close the game from Minnesota in Tampa If the score is tied after each team's first possession we go to next score wins and We can't have a tie as we did have earlier In the season when Carolina and Cincinnati played to a draw on the missed field goal at the end of 75 minutes. It's the eighth overtime game in the league this season. Two of the previous seven have been won by that opening possession touchdown. Think back to Seattle and Russell Wilson answering the drive by Denver and Peyton Manning with a touchdown to win the game. And Denver never got to possess the ball. Washington's chance first. Bailey kicks off. And again, right through the uprights, no return, so it's Colt McCoy at the 20-yard line. John, we talked about McCoy. It's been almost three years since he started. He looked rusty and struggled in the first half. Was he better, in your opinion, in the second half? Yeah, he's done some good things. This is a tough, tough assignment in the noise on the road against a good team. He's 20 for 25. He's taking care of the ball other than the one bad decision in the first half like to see him run Alfred Morris reestablish that ground game that was good for him early in this half try to start from the 20 and McCoy seeking the middle it is caught and Garcon gains 22 to the 42 yard line that's tough play action well-designed play linebacker steps up and Garcon left to right shows up beautifully in the middle of the field nice anticipation by Colt McCoy Redskins have had a lot of success on first down this season they've made more yards per play on first down than anyone there's no Justin Durant for Dallas arm injury in the fourth quarter starting linebacker not out there for them they're in nickel right now five DBs out of the pistol, Morris to the left. Good first down gain, lowers the shoulder and gains eight yards. Morris at 71 yards on the night. You can see Rod Marinelli on the Cowboy sideline. He is not happy 
The ball gets to the edge. Niles Paul at tight end does a nice job setting the edge, and that ball gets to the outside, and that forces Wilcox to make a one-on-one -on -one tackle. But when you make nine yards on first down running the football, Rod Marinelli's not going to be happy. They get a touchdown wins. A field goal gives Dallas an opportunity to match or better it. Where Halu left that time, Rolando McLean got on the other side of the line of scrimmage. Run and through. Let the tackle. Excuse me, my run through linebackers in a short yardage second down situation. Rolando McLean rejects this inside run. You got to play with your eyes if you're Corey Lichtensteiger and right guard Chris Chester struggles. The boy's dead. His high school coach. Third and three. McCoy lost one. And it's caught. A contested grab by Jordan Reed. Keeps this drive alive at the Dallas 45. They can see that coming a mile away. They isolate Reed away from trips. He's one on one with a safety. And Jordan Reed is just better playing the ball. And Colt McCoy has total confidence in Jordan Reed's ability to box out Barry Church for a huge first down. It's been interesting to watch play calling since this overtime rules changed. Usually you're thinking you're a first down away. You got to think touchdown on that first possession and maybe a shot here. Play action McCoy scrambling trying to keep the play alive directing towards Reed and Reed two feet down made the catch inside the 30 yard line. What a play on both ends. Colt McCoy to his left, telling Jordan Reed, get open down the field, I'll give you a chance. That's an impossible catch by Jordan Reed. Got the two feet down. You watch all the way through as he goes to the ground, oh. maintaining possession, completing the process. Three minutes into OT, Washington has it at the Dallas 29. Twenty-nine. Morris got out of an arm tackle. Almost a loss of yardage by Anthony Spencer. Instead, it's a gain of two. Jay Gruden's trying to win back-to-back -back games for the first time in his Washington tenure. He's got Colt McCoy's dad, Brad, sitting there and watching. It's been a long time since he's felt that pit in his stomach because his son hasn't played in three years. And Jason Garrett's that hopeless feeling. You lost your quarterback, Romo, to the back injury. Whedon, the backup, comes in, gives you 10 points. Romo comes back in that last drive. They almost lose it twice. Washington gets the toss, and Washington is just a play away from a road win. At 6-1 Dallas. McCoy throws it complete. And Deshaun Jackson to the 23-yard line. It'll bring up another third and manageable. And the first drive of overtime. Call that a stick route. Normally you have a big receiver run that pattern. And Deshaun Jackson's done a lot of good things tonight. That time in the land of Giants, he catches the ball, protects it after McLean levels him. Third down and four. And in this formation to the right side, expect a bunch release and look for number 86 out of the stack. McCoy is at 13 of his last 14. And another one. Can he make the play? No. Reed that time is denied by J.J. Wilcox. Washington will attempt the field goal to put the pressure on Dallas. So McCoy gets him down there, and now it's up to Kai Forbath, who kicked a game winner last week. He had a game winner against Baltimore in 2012. This would not be a game winner, but would put Dallas in the pressure spot where they must score a field goal to keep the game going. And he missed the mid-range field goal against Philadelphia late. Let's see how he handles the pressure. 40 yards for the lead. Washington takes the edge in overtime. So Dallas must score. A field goal keeps the game going. A touchdown for the victory. Back in Texas in a moment. Mention Washington going for the back-to-back -back wins. Dallas trying to get to 7-1. and one. Philadelphia lost yesterday. 
The Cowboys not only atop the NFC East, but tied for the best record in the NFL, along with Denver and Arizona at 6-1. and one. Washington trying to get its first division win here. Colt McCoy in the big games, he has come so close in his high school career, got him to the state title game, but couldn't win it. Got Texas to the national championship game, got hurt fifth snap of that game. Oh, this isn't the equal of those two, but would be such a big moment in his career. It's up to the Washington defense. The drive will start at the 20. As Tony Romo comes back out with the Cowboys offense. They cannot forget about DeMarco Murray. Murray ran the ball extremely well while Romo was in the locker room. Whedon was at quarterback, and Murray changed this game with a couple runs. Would not be surprised if they took a little pressure off Romo here and handed him the ball. And again, partner, priority thinking as a play caller, four down territory here. You're not punting, the game ends no matter what. So this is four down territory for Dallas on the entirety of this drive until they get to field goal range. Romo gets back to Murray. Murray through a missed tackle, gains eight on first down. And they continue to feed him. He goes over 140 yards tonight. The same play he gashed the Redskins with earlier. Misdirection, counter play. They pull both guards. Eight yards on first down. I'd hand it to Murray again, Mike. McCoy and Washington have put up 409 yards of offense. Romo Whedon and the Cowboys, 373. Second and two, play action. Romo. Checking it down to Murray. That's a beautiful play by Perry Riley Jr. To so keep the shot of the first down. And it'll be third down. Well, it's a two-man route. Murray's just going to check down in the flat to his right. Off of play action. And Perry Riley with a beautiful one-on-one -on -one tackle. And again, this is a four-down territory for the Cowboys. There's Bryant at the top of the screen looking at the rookie, Bashad Breeland. Ooh. And that has been a great matchup tonight. Here comes an all-out blitz. Yep, that, that screens every Washington defender, all 11. There's no safety deep. Romo looks right, comes back towards Witten. And it's broken up. Broken up by Riley along with Emerson. And it's come to fourth down. This drive in Dallas crazy. This time they don't bring the blitz. It looks like an all-out blitz, and Jim Hazlitt bluffed it. And on fourth down and four, I expect the same call. Washington is going to show an all-out blitz, blitz. Do they bring it or do they bluff it? Game's on the line. Go with what's been good to you. Here they come. Must get to the 30 to keep the game alive. Play clock at five. Timeout taken by Witten. Witten saw Jason Garrett on the sideline. Romo was up there trying to adjust and look at the last minute. Garrett and Witten pulled the plug and said, no more. Timeout here on fourth <laughs> and a long three. This has been something tonight. It's been tight every snap of the game. It's been a great game. Well, you know what's coming. The Redskins are going to line up Pressure everybody again. up yep. there, and you don't know if they're coming or going. So it's important that Dallas has an all-purpose play. Call a play. Get, be ready for a hand signal, and if you get it, let it rip. But the same blitz and the same bluff of the blitz has hurt Dallas all night tonight, and on fourth down and four, I'll be shocked if Jim Hazlitt doesn't bring it again. When you guys go back and watch the film, think you're going to come away impressed with those corners. The young corners for Washington have held up for four quarters and overtime. Can they do it on this play? There it is. They're showing all-out blitz. I saw a little movement. Got an idea. Romo giving a little sneaky hand signal. The game's on the line. Fourth and three. Romo's back. He's in trouble. Trying to escape. He's got to throw it. He does. It's incomplete. And Washington wins. Unbelievable win for the Washington Redskins behind... The third straight quarterback, Colt McCoy, who comes back to Texas victorious. Yeah. 
So Colt McCoy comes back to the state of Texas. Robert Griffin III is waiting in the bullpen. Romo was heroic to come back in the game after the back injury. They didn't score those two drives. And Jay Gruden enters the Dallas-Washington rivalry for the first time and gets a win. Here is the final play of the game. Rashad Breeland, the rookie corner, one-on-one -on -one with Des Bryant. He rejected him twice in the red zone earlier in this game. This time with the game on the line, Romo gets out of trouble, buys enough time to find Bryant, and guess who breaks up the pass? What a performance by Bashad Breeland. He almost intercepted a pass at the end of regulation. He has played lights out for the Redskins, and Colt McCoy, 25 out of 30 and 300 yards. His dad, Brad, exalted. He has seen his son play in those big game moments and get hurt the end of his high school career, the end of his college career, and to come here and see them beat Dallas in Dallas with so many of his fans and friends here. Able to get the winning moment for Jay Gruden and Colt McCoy, who are standing by with Lisa Salter. Thank you, Mike. I'm gonna, thank you, Mike. I'm going to start with Colt. You first. Once you saw that the game was going into overtime, you knew you were going to have a chance to win it. What were you saying to your guys in the huddle? Yeah, this, it was our moment, you know, I trusted Jay, I trusted Sean. Those guys made some great plays, great calls. Our, our offense played well, um, and our defense played outstanding. So we just wanted to move the ball, get some points on the board, because we knew our defense was playing lights out. And I made tons of mistakes tonight, but my teammates stuck with me, my coaches stuck with me, and we found a way to win, and it's sweet. And Jay, heading, heading into overtime, what did you say to your quarterback? His first start in three years, what did you say to him? Oh, he's a vet. He knows how to play. He's a calm, cool guy. So I had to get him calm down and relax and play our style of football. You know, we blew it at the end there. I should have taken a timeout before regulation. We had a chance to win it, but luckily our team bailed us out. We talked about it at halftime. He struggled in the first half, made some bad decisions. What did you think about the way he responded in the second half? Oh, he's great. You know, it's just kept us in the game. We didn't have any major turnovers, and defense played outstanding. Coach has it dialed up some great blitzes at the right time, and this is a great football team. We beat hats off to the Cowboys, and this is a heck of a win for us to really get started for the second half of the season. Jay, your brother has a question for you. Go ahead, John. Hey, Jay, I just want to know when you're going to give Colt McCoy a hug and it's starting to enjoy the victory. When, when are you going to give Colt a big hug and start enjoying this? <laughs> As soon as I get off the microphone with you, Clown. <laughs> oh, go for it. Go for it. <laughs> Thank you, Lee. No, no, go, and go, Colt. Go. And Jay Gruden. Quite a night here in Texas as the Dallas Cowboys and the Washington Redskins come down to overtime. And Washington kicks the field goal and Dallas gets the stop. The GMC postgame is coming up next on ESPN. We'll have the top plays of Week 8. Steve Levy, Trent Dilfer, Ray Lewis standing by, Steve Young as well. They will recap this game, have their reaction on it. And Darren Ravel has a conversation with Michael Jordan on the eve of the NBA season, which starts tomorrow. Colt McCoy comes back home and has a night he'll never forget. Washington has won back-to-back -back games for the first time since the end of the 2012 season and the most unlikely win for Washington in Dallas since the game they based the movie The Replacements on back in 1987. In overtime, Washington 20, Dallas 17. With John Gruden and Lisa Salters, Mike Tirico, stay tuned. Sports Center starts now.